I've heard about some cults today, and they all seem pretty bad. And this one seems like the lesser of the ones we've heard today. Thank you. Right? But some of them can get really bad. I mean, like, really bad. Have any of you ever heard of the Ant Hill Kids? No. no. Uh-uh. It's like the Apple Bottom Gang? Oh, God, no. Okay. Don Knotts would not be involved with any of this Are shit. Are you sure, I though? guarantee you. Not even the cast of Homps would Ooh. be into this. Oh, say it ain't so, man, daddy. Trigger warning for humans. This is a horrible story. This is as brutal as it gets. There's no animal mutilation, but people, oh yes, people have really bad things done to them in this story. If any of that bothers you, turn away now. Full disclosure, this is a horrible story. The more I read about it, the more it's just about the horrible stuff that happened in the cult. There's very little about their preachings, their ideas. There's very little about that. It's just more about the horrific stuff that went on with this cult. So if stuff like that really shocks you, you're in the wrong place for the next few minutes. So, this next story is NSFL! NSFL not safe for life. Strap in, kids. We've all heard about different cults from around the world. From Jonestown to the Bhagwan. Uh, Jonestown. To the Heaven's Gate. Well, none of them couldn't hold a candle to the sheer brutality of the Ant Hill Kids. Formed in 1977 in Ontario, Canada... Under the control of Roch Theroux. Roch Theroux. How do you spell that? R O C H T H E R I A U L T. Hmm. Now, it started as a splinter of the Seventh day Adventists. Roch would hold detoxifying sessions and group meetings, helping people get off drugs and alcohol. Seventh day uh, Adventists, they're more the vegetarian. It's about health. Healthy yeah. eating, healthy living, healthy everything. And their uh, Sabbath is sundown Friday, right? Sun up Saturday, I oh, think. I don't, I don't know anything about them. I believe so. Interesting. I couldn't be more of a heathen if I tried. I'm sorry. Now, Roch was really, he preached a clean lifestyle, like we just said, you know, really you know, free of all sins of the mind and the flesh. But he started getting more radical with his beliefs and with the way he controlled his people. He was a very charismatic person, a very uh, controlling, manipulating person. But something about him, people were drawn to him. A lot of it probably had to do with the fact that he was helping addicts. Right. You know, right, right. he's yeah. working with addicts. And I think at some point he realized I can make these people addicted to me, not addicted to <laughs> You. Well, see, I was going like, well, maybe he was trying his hand at, you know, like philanthropic measures, but that makes sense, too, if he was just targeting addicts. Right. So, I mean, just people that are kind of can be easy to manipulate. They need advice. Yes. They needed something to believe in. Mm-hmm. I'm a subject to believe in. They broke off to form their own commune in the wilderness near a mountainside Roch, called Eternal Mountain. I love the names Eternal Mountain. That sounds like one of the most romantic novels ever it written. It does. <sighs> also, it's my favorite indie album. So the reason for the move was, of course, God told them that the world would end in 1979 and they must prepare. Every one of these stories involved them telling people the world is going to end and they believe Why? it. That's ridiculous. Why are people so afraid of the fucking apocalypse? I'm looking forward to it. There's a, it's a, is it Patton Oswalt that does the, uh, like... W- why wouldn't you want to die in the apocalypse? You want to die like a normal ass random like hospital bed death, or you get to die where like everyone else dies yeah. the day know, everything yeah. ends. It like, was insane, right? It's exactly. True. And and you're not going to miss any of your shows. That's the main thing no, about right. the apocalypse. I'm not going to miss the gonna new miss season anything. of Better Call Saul. Definitely know? no FOMO. Word. Dying without FOMO is probably like, <laughs> it is. that's all we that's, want. That's, that's all, all I really want. want right? Like that's Just all like, anyone at wants. At least, at least, you know. Yes. Now the cult or the group, they never exceeded 40 people. They began to build their own little town. While Roch sat back and watched. He never did any work. That's always the thing with these cults. People do all the work for people, they just sit back. And this is how they got their name, because he thought they looked like a group of ants as they constructed their commune, the way they all worked before him. And so he called them the Ant Hill Kids. Hmm. Hmm. Like I said, he was a very charismatic and a kind leader. Until he wasn't. It was in the wilderness that Roch began to drink 
Even though he preached a clean lifestyle, he himself started to drink and drink a lot. And things got dark. Very, very dark. He began to take complete control of their lives. He would not allow anyone to speak unless he was present. No one could speak to each other unless he was in the room. All sexual contact had to be approved by him. And all of the women became his concubines. And he ended up having almost 20, uh, 20 plus kids with nine different women. So Whoa. this guy cucked everyone, I guess? Boom. or Not to say cuck because that's got negative connotations. But he basically lorded over. He, he mastered. Yeah. Like hmm. he was everyone's master. He's but the yeah. Lord, he took the Lord's night, right? Like that's oh, yeah, he, 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 he'd Braveheart often go style. by the name Moses. Oh, okay. He'd also go oh. by the name Moses really or Pop. Like, dog, we're Canadian. You're Moses all of a sudden, like Canadian he's... Moses is a good name for like a folk band. Ooh. <laughs> not, not even, <laughs> <laughs> not even his best friend was like. That's a really bad name. I mean, to like, pick. dude, pick something else. Moses is like really famous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, He's got a good Q rating. <laughs> yep. Once the drinking got to a certain point, began the punishments or purifications. This is where it gets rough, kids. Roke would beat them with belts or hammers. What? Wow. He would force people to cut off their own fingers and toes using wire clippers. Their own? Their own. That's- and they'd... Fucking do it. Oh, oh my no. God. Ah, I got the screaming jimmies. Oh, you're not even ready. You're not even close to screaming yet. Seriously, that's nothing compared to what's coming up. Squeak, There's just they, these people have these like amazingly powerful, charismatic ways. I can't even get a fucking raise at work. And they got like people like <laughs> 40 fucking people in the woods cutting their own fingers off and shit. Like, wh- wh- who? What are they doing? How persuasive can you be? Oh, why can't I be that charismatic that people just that people chop, will their, just fingers chop their, off. their shit off for just yeah. because I tell them to? Yes. See, I am. I just don't. Oh, see, well, it's, see, it's with great power. Come, um, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That was fucking yeah, amazing. That was shit. great. <laughs> Members would also have to shoot each other in the shoulder <laughs> to prove their faith. And as punishments would be doled out for doing anything, for speaking at the wrong time, for just a a, a child crying, anything would have a punishment. One of them would be they would have their body hairs plucked out individually, like (laughs) almost all of them. (laughs) There she is. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Certain members would have to break their own legs with sledgehammers. Oh, my God. To show their faith. They would also be made to sit on lit stoves. Jesus Christ. Children. Wait, what year was this? Uh, this was 1977. So these were like gas stoves or like, yes. like electric stoves? No, we're talking burners. Oh. oh. Branding. That's worse. Children were nailed to trees and have rocks thrown at them. Oh, no. They would force people, including children, to eat dead mice and feces and Roke would often defecate on them mm. this guy was a piece of work I been but the- they stayed they stayed exactly I would have been the worst fucking cult member of all time like there's like how do you pitch that like I'm gonna sm- you smash your own leg with a sledgehammer and then I'm gonna poop on you when you say it, so like exactly. That, I don't have course. the persuasion of yeah. whoever this is. Yeah. I mean, that's how it would come. You just, I mean, that's how this order would come out of my you mouth. Need to pepper it up a little bit, you know. Give a little of the little Jesus little, little razzmatazz. Yeah, <laughs> flex it out, bro. <laughs> flex it out. Once again, this is where it gets rougher. Uh. That was just the beginning. As his drinking got worse, so would his behavior, because then the surgeries began. Performed on a dirty wooden table using filthy knives. The most in- notorious surgery was performed on Solange Boyard. She complained about an upset stomach. Oh, no. Bad idea. It was described in a newspaper thusly. Within minutes, 32-year-old Solange, who complained of stomach problems, lay naked on a wooden table in one of the commune's log cabins. 
wearing red velour robes and a gold-colored crown, the symbols of his proclaimed role as king of the Israelites. The role punched Boyard in the stomach, jammed a plastic tube up her rectum, and performed a crude enema with molasses and olive oil. Then, as she lay silent, he sliced open her abdomen with a freshly sharpened knife and ripped off a piece of her intestines with his own bare hands. The operation completed. Thoreau ordered another follower, Gabrielle, to stitch up the gaping wound with a needle and thread. A day later, Boyard died in almost unimaginable agony, a hapless victim of what police in Ontario and Quebec describe as the most bizarre and violent cult in the history of Canadian crime. But he wasn't done. Oh, my God. With this particular person. Jesus Christ. He claimed to have the power of resurrection. He did not. So he drilled a hole in her skull. <gasps> and he and no. all the other male cult members. No. no, 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 no. No. Ejaculated into her skull. Oddly, it didn't work. Who saw that coming? It didn't work. Gabrielle fled the cult because of the horrors that she had endured after that day. Mm. But her horrors included, but were not limited to, a blowtorch held to her genitals, eight of her teeth taken out, and a hypodermic needle broken off in her back. Right. However, she still returned by her own volition after all of that. She fled after all that stuff happened, but after a few uh, weeks, or not even a month, I believe, she went back to the cult on her own volition. Kind of like no. a, uh, this, Stockholm Syndrome? Oh, without a doubt. This was the power the man held. People would flee, but always, for some reason, come back. Gabrielle shouldn't have come back. Roch cut off one of her fingers, nailed her hand to a table, and cut off her entire arm with a hunting knife. And still she stayed. Mm. She finally fled to the authorities after he cut off parts of her breasts and smashed in her head with the blunt side of an axe. Finally, Roch was arrested for multiple murders and abuse and was given a life sentence in 1989. In 2011... His cellmate killed him by stabbing him with a knife. He immediately walked to the guard station, handed over the knife, and said, That piece of shit is down on the range. Here's the knife. I've sliced him up. Damn. Fuck Whoa. yeah. That's fucking intense. And that, I mean, that still was not enough for his horrible crimes, really. That was not really? enough. But it proves the power of personality and charisma. Because even being subjected to the most unimaginable horrors, the sheep... Return to the flock. Okay, uh, I have to be completely honest. That made me do a complete 180. Um, hey, guys, 